loud laughing direction right there, just sank it. Sank it. I know it's a concert, but when you really enjoy something, don't you sing with the people? So these next two songs, these next two songs are original. So what I want you to do is learn them real quick. And then I want you to join in with us. Can we do that? Go straight to wait on the Lord. I know you do it. Intuitive. Glory to God.
and wait for God to do something. That's not what we're talking about. You know how they say, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. That's not what we're saying. The word of God says that from the foundations of the world, his son, Jesus, was the lamb slain. That means that before there was a problem, there was a solution. So when we say wait on the Lord, we mean grab you a serving tray. Get you a nice napkin. Drape it over your arm and go to the Father and say, how can I serve you today? How can I wait upon you today? They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord. We're not going to go back into that, but I want you to leave with that. If you get nothing else from tonight, don't let go. Hold fast to the promise of God. You know exactly what he told you. You know exactly what he gave you. You know exactly what he said unto you. A lot of times we like to say, oh, I don't know what God has for me. You know what he has for you. You dream about it every night. You see it during the day when you're sitting at that desk at that job that you cannot stand. You see it every day when you punch that clock. You see it every day when you wake up in the morning in a situation that you don't like. You know what God promised you. You know what he gave you. So with that, I leave you with this, and then we're gonna go on to the next song and move out of the way. Right here. Don't you let go. You just hold on. Hello and welcome. I'm Jacqueline Battle, and I'm so happy that you are able to join us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all those who are viewing now and those that will be viewing later. Thank you, Father, that the purpose of your kingdom come and your perfect will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. Father God, we want to thank you so much for the power of the blood of Jesus. We want to thank you so much for your heavenly host that's involved in pleading our cause with them that strive with us and fighting against them that attempt to fight against us. Father, we want to thank you so much for your power, your hand upon those spirits of Ashtoreth and, and Komash, or the spirit of Malcolm. We thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name, that you abolish the, the cult races and the necromancers, mediums and idols that have been set up um, to come against your kingdom. We thank you so much for moving against the fetishes in the name of Jesus Christ, that you do away with, oh God, in the name of Jesus, those forces that have attempted to try to camouflage themselves in the kingdom of God and infiltrate. We want to thank you, oh God, that you bind up the very chariots that have been set aside in worship of the Son. We thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's name, that you're tearing down uh, those places where they have set up shop. God, we thank you for binding up the spirit of the male prostitutes, the places where the women leave the covering of Astra in the spiritual realm. We thank you for destroying, for casting down the mount of the destroyers that attempts to stand against your people. We thank you, Father, that you bring all the objects that were made for Baal in the name of Jesus Christ, under subjection in Jesus Christ's name. We thank you that you have set up priests in the temple guards in the temple uh, for them to do a work and we think that you're setting them forth right now in the name of Jesus Christ to deliver and to cleanse the temple oh heavenly father we thank you that even now that you're you're suppressing the adulterous places and priests whom literally have set up uh, principalities that have been appointed to try to move in and create shrines in the kingdom, the spirit of Judah, the place of praise that you sent forth um, to go before to precede you and your spirit. Father, we thank you that even though shrines are attempted to be set up by adulterous priests in that area to try to infiltrate and to try to dilute 
uh, the power of praise that you have established. We thank you even now that your hand is upon those idolatrous attempts to try to to poison um, the the temple of Judah, the spirit of of Judah, from being able to go forth unadulterated to to plead your cause, O oh Lord, with them that strive in the kingdom of God. Father God, we are trusting you to move in ways beyond what we could possibly think or ask. We think that you're shattering the very pillars and cutting down the demonic sacred posts that have been set up with us being unaware. God, we thank you. We thank you again that according to Psalm 35, that literally you're pleading our cause, oh Lord, and that attempt to strive with us while we're asleep. They're, they're setting up posts in ways that are beyond what we could possibly think or ask, but you're not asleep. You never sleep. And we want to thank you for that. So right now we ask and pray, oh God, that your kingdom come. Your kingdom of wisdom, your kingdom of knowledge, your kingdom of understanding come. Your will be done in this earth as it is in heaven. We release now the power of the blood of Jesus over the spirit of the owl, the, the howling creatures that go forth in, in seasons, uh, such as seasons that are coming up. We release the power of the blood of Jesus and the hand of God from the jackals and the satires that have been set up and the spirit of, 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 of the dragon ostriches that go forth during the season that we're heading into. We thank you so much for your seasons that you've set up. Precede any any counter attempt of the enemy, any counter petition of the enemy. We thank you that you go before us and you prepare the way to receive us. You give us seasons and, and cycles, dear God, and, and you tell us to be in the right place at the right time so that you can use us as instruments in this place. We thank you for that. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If you would go with me as we read in Isaiah 10, verses 1 through 4. That's Isaiah 10, verses 1 through 4. I know that we all understand that it's very important that we continue to be instruments of compassion conduits of assistance to those who stand in need, um, such as the widows and the orphans. We know that. But we also have to be conscious of laws and legislature and, and lobbyists that go forth and they move in such a way um, that's covert. And sometimes we miss what they're doing and they can be doing things that can actually subvert the poor. And I know that I've heard a lot of people say, well, you know, the Best thing that I can do to help the poor is not be one of them. I don't disagree with that. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we are guarding against laws and rulings that are going forth that are literally going to be harmful towards those who are our poor. After all, our job is to do unto others as we would have done to us. And so, though we don't want to be in certain positions, we still need to show care and compassion. It's very important that we do that uh, because Christ is the epitome of compassion, was and is, and will always be the epitome of the compassion of the Most High God. Isaiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Woe unto them that decree unto unrighteous decree, and that right grievish which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people and the widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fathers and what will ye do in the day of visitation in the desolation which shall come from far to whom will ye flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? Without me, they shall bow down under the prisoner and they shall fall under the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness, which they have prescribed to turn aside the need from judgment and to take away the right from the poor people. Very important to the heart of God 
that we remember not only to be nurturing to those who stand in need of help. See, you don't know what people have gone through. You don't know what has caused them to be in the situation that they're in. You don't know who dropped them. You don't know what circumstances pushed them to the brink. But you know a God who is loving and kind towards you. And it is your job as his son or daughter to display that compassion, to allow the spirit of compassion of God, God's kingdom of compassion to come into your heart and let his will be done in you in this earth as he would have in heaven. That means that as you walk about, you are a vessel of the spirit of God's compassion. And you need to pay attention to laws and legislature and, and bills that are going forth that could affect those who are our poorest, those who are defenseless. And I hear people all the time say what people can do to help themselves. You don't know what people can do to help themselves. You have no idea. I hear some people say, well, they, they spend their time uh, uh, living to peddle and to, to do what they can to take advantage of others so that they can live this way. But doesn't that tell you that maybe the state of mind may not be in the best of health? Which is why we, we don't judge. God judges. We do his will. And that is to remember those who are our poorest. Remember them in the courts. Remember them watch laws that are being being passed or lobbying lobbyists that are going for to get things set up. Understand how that's going to affect our widows, our orphans, those who are poor, those who have mental illness, emotional issues that prohibit them from being able to function in full capacity. Proverbs 31 verses 8 through 9. Proverbs 31 verses 8 through 9 tells us that the most important thing that we need to look out for as daughters and sons of the kingdom of God is that we need to be concerned once again with how our fellow man is being treated. Open thy mouth for the dumb and the cause of all such as are appointed for destruction. Open thy mouth judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Open your mouth. You see stuff going on and you say, I'm not going to say anything. You assume somebody's going to take care of it, but who is that somebody? You pray a prayer for them, but you keep driving. The hands that you have as a son or a daughter of God in the kingdom of God, it belongs to the most high. If not you, then who? Open your mouth and begin to speak in their behalf. Don't look at it, see it, and say nothing. How can the love of God, how is the love of God dwelling in us when we do that? Open our mouths and begin to speak. Speak for those who, who have a voice, but no one will hear. The word of God says that a poor man may have the wisdom to save the city, but nobody wants to hear what a poor man has to say. Open your mouth. You're in a position to speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Just giving a handout is one thing, and that's needed as well. But even greater, don't do that and think you've done your part and you can sleep well at night. No. Open your mouth. Begin to see what laws are taking place in your local municipality that will either help or hinder the poor. And then begin to judge righteously and plead the cause of the poor and the need. We're all working to line our own pockets and just to send money into the future, which is nothing wrong with that. We need to prepare. We need to, to, to send money into the future um, and, and, and set up certain areas of investment and, and uh, investment and diversity. That's very important. Because again, the very best thing we can do for those who are poor is not be one of them. So yes, those things are very important. 
but we also need to remember not to be so judgmental and to do what we can to help and to watch out for law in our local municipality as well as on, on a state level, as well as on a, a, a national level. Start looking into things. And when you see some things that are not right, remember the power of the pen and begin to use your voice righteously on behalf of those whose voice will not be. I've seen some people who will help the poor, but they have a problem with them as far as their the things that they ingest in order to help them numb the pain that they're in. And it's interesting that in this same passage, as I close out, in verses 6 and 7, it says, Give strong drink to him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those who are of a heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery. No. Regardless to what your thoughts or feelings may be about the book of Proverbs. That is in the book of Proverbs, verse 31. Chapter 31, verses 6 through 7. Obviously, I read from Proverbs 31, verses 8 and 9. And prior to that, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Well, I'm Jacqueline Battle, being very concerned today about those who are unable to help themselves, those who are the poorest in our community. Remember, you are a conduit of the very compassion of God. Stop walking around being silent. Help in the way that you're able to help. And remember, that when you help those who are unable to help themselves, you're helping them in the way that they see it as help. You're helping them in the highest and best way that you're able to help and they are able to receive. I'm Jacqueline Battle saying thank you so much for joining us today. God loves you and I'm praying for you. Thanks for watching. Oh, remember to like, subscribe, and shit. Have a good day. that we name it Psalm 117. So, it's very simple, very simple refrain and we want you to join in and sing with us. It says this, uh, praise the Lord all nations, glorify him all people. Praise the Lord all nations, glorify him all people. That's y'all. For great is his for his for great is his faithful love. For great is his faithful love. Hallelujah. Amen. His truth endures forever. That's it. Oh,